All right, I'm on my lawn mower here. Okay. Got my AirPods Pro in. Mm-hmm. Noise cancellation now activated. Right. Let's see how good this puppy does. Okay. Hello people, my name is Elon Osborne and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. But more specifically, my wife got a new iPad Pro. Uh, cool. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. Just kidding. Apple was running a special where if you use their education discount, since my wife is a teacher and I'm hot for a teacher. <laughs> Gross. You got a free pair of iPods. Close. Nope. Try again. Nope. You got a free pair of AirPods with your purchase. But you could also pay a little bit extra if you wanted an upgrade to the AirPods Pro. My wife was already a member of the pod people, so I was like, let's get the pros, because I want to test out that noise canceling, yo. But before we get into the sauce of the episode, if you like my silly way of doing product reviews, there are so many ways to support the channel. I've got a Patreon which you can join that has exclusive content. I've got merch and music for sale. I've got an Etsy shop with digital prints you can put around your house. And I even got a kid's book. So please support the channel so I can keep entertaining you. Link in description. Look at this. It's a box. Oh, and the side of a box with a logo and the back. Oh, look at the top. What's in the box? Um, Elon, you're, uh, you're putting the wrapping back on the box. All right, all right. Yeah, we get it, Apple. Oh, that's what's inside of the box? Could've fooled me. This is actual speed. I'm that good. Whoa. All right, let's hurry up and get to the B-roll. AirPods Pro are now a year old. Happy birthday! But this is the first pair that I have personally owned. But what immediately sets this apart from other wireless earbuds? Seamless, seamless, seamless integration. Oh. Not having to deal with the hassle of trying to get two devices to communicate with each other is worth the premium you pay for Apple products in general. All I did was open up the case and my phone was like, hey, did you want to pair these AirPods to the phone, homie? Why, yes. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it. Enjoy. What the f Also, Apple has surprised me. Hey, don't go. Apple has also surprised me by being able to hide these little ear tips into the packaging itself. I mean, look at this thing. Whoop. Extra ear tips. What? Then they had the audacity to make it really easy for me to check and see which tip size is the best for me by putting this little feature in the settings called Just a tip. Just for a second. Just to see how it feels. Just go to Bluetooth, then tap the little I next to AirPods Pro or whatever it's called, and go to Ear Tip Fit Test. It plays some music and tests the seal. Just like that, huh? The medium tips are the default size that come on the AirPods Pro when you open up the package, but they do also have large and small to figure out which size is best for your ears. The ingenuity and design of the ear tips themselves is even remarkable as well. At first, it feels like you're gonna rip the tips when you try and pull them off, but that's not the case. They are very resilient. Just give them a good tug. Oh. Super easy, right? <laughs> Just give him a good pinch and a good tug. Nope. Son of a... Yep. Just give him a good pinch and a good tug. Just nope. give him a good pinch and a good tug. Hey! Boop. They come right off. Finally. And it's just as easy to put them back on. 
Concentrate. Ta-da! It's the little things, man. Again, that's why you pay a premium for most Apple products because not only do they think about the design and the engineering behind that product, but the user experience as well. They got a lot of flack about the original AirPods design with how it was falling out of a lot of people's ears. So they were like, fine, we'll make a pro version with some better ceiling ear tips, jeez. But back to the case, one unfortunate thing is that in 2020, we still have this lightning port on the bottom of the case itself. What's even more confusing is that it now ships with this cable, which is lightning on this end to USB-C on this end. What? Because the box is so small, there's no power adapter that comes with it. So in order to make this cable work, they just assume you already have a power adapter from an iPad Pro or a MacBook Pro or something along those lines. I mean, sure, you probably have some lightning cables lying around the house if you have an iPhone or some other device that used the lightning cable before. So you can still charge it that way if you need to. I mean, I get it though. They're saving money by not having to send you a power adapter because they just assume you already have means to charge this device anyway. And on top of that, it can be charged wirelessly. So if you have that kind of setup on your nightstand or wherever, you're covered there. But come on, Apple, can we please just make everything across the board USB-C, including this little port here? But another nice touch is that the AirPods Pro themselves are magnetic. So when you put them back in the case, they kind of, they get sucked back in. You're afraid you're gonna get sucked it's a small but really nice touch so that you just know that they're snugly in their correct position. They thought of everything. It's the little things. Are they the best earbuds when exercising? They're pretty good. The snug fit actually works pretty well, at least in my instance. I know there have been complaints about people having to adjust them or they keep falling out with lots of movement. Everyone's different. Anatomy is weird, man. Moving on. Right. How do they sound? Also pretty good. The clarity is on point. The bass response is actually a lot better than the original AirPods because now they have that tight seal, which just gives you a better response to those low frequencies. But I found that there is a loss in quality, especially when you're listening to music, when you activate the noise canceling feature, which we'll talk about in just a second. But if you put the noise canceling on and you're just listening to a podcast, no big deal. Now, the most important feature that sets this apart from the original AirPods is the active noise cancellation feature, or ANC. Because of the ear tips, just the tip, they actually do a pretty good job of passive noise cancellation, just like any earplugs will do. But once you turn on the ANC, it actually does kind of take you to this sonic space that's a little disorienting. After listening to them for a couple weeks now, since I'm a musician and went to school for audio engineering, I really don't know if I like the active noise canceling. You can change the ANC settings on your phone by bringing up the control center and holding down on the AirPods volume meter, then tapping on noise control. Here you can choose between noise canceling off, on, or transparency mode. Transparency mode is actually pretty cool because like I said, when you have them plugged into your ears, they basically act like just some earplugs. So in order to actually hear your surroundings, if you need to, these little mesh covered microphones actually pick up the sound that's around you and then feed it back into the AirPods so that you can actually hear conversations if you need to. You can change the ANC settings on your phone, but if you're away from your phone or you don't wanna dig it out of your pocket, there are ways to interact with the AirPods themselves to switch some things around. Instead of the weird tappy tap move you did on the original AirPods, you now have this force sensor that's on the stem. You underestimate the power of the Force Sensor. I have AirPods. There's no Force Sensor. It's exclusively on the AirPods Pro. What? No! Press once to pause or resume music, or even switch to a phone call if you're listening to music. Press twice to skip a song, and three times to go to a previous song. And you can also cycle between the noise canceling modes by pressing and holding until you hear a chime. Note. By default, it only switches between noise canceling on and transparency mode. I personally like to have noise canceling off as an option as well. So I had to go into Bluetooth settings again, go to the right or left ear, and make sure the check mark was also next to off. So then I could cycle between the three options instead of just two. But as you can see, you can customize the press and hold action even further by having one change noise canceling modes 
and the other to activate Siri if you feel so inclined. Speaking of Siri, you can activate it just by doing the normal, hey Siri. But since the AirPods Pro have active noise cancellation as part of the physical interactions you can do, it actually doesn't have a way of changing the volume right on the AirPods Pro themselves. You can change it by saying, hey Siri, turn it down, turn it up, volume to 20%, what have you. But that's kind of lame in my opinion. I wish the stem had some touch sensitivity as well as the force sensors. So then you could maybe go up to change the volume up, down to change it down, that kind of thing. But maybe Apple thought that was too provocative. Please don't. Wait a second, what the heck is this spatial audio crap? This is actually new to iOS 14. This feature actually broadens the soundstage when listening to certain movies. Apparently there's going to be a Dolby Atmos firmware update, maybe sometime in 2021, that will allow object-based surround sound to be coming through the AirPods Pro. And though that sounds exciting, I'm not exactly holding my breath. Dolby Atmos from earbuds? I'm a little skeptical. But another really cool thing about the spatial audio is that it recognizes where the sound is coming from by using the gyroscope and the accelerometer within the AirPods Pro themselves. So if you happen to be watching something on an iPad, iPhone, MacBook, whatever, and you turn your head, the sound stage shifts, making it sound like it's still coming from the direction of your device. I've listened to it. And it's trippy. Any whatever. The number one reason I wanted to upgrade to the AirPods Pro is to answer the nagging question. How good is the noise canceling anyway? Active noise cancellation basically means that it's just trying to replicate any steady ambient noise that's going on around you and shifting that noise just by mere milliseconds so that it cancels out the waves of the ambient noise itself. I also found this small glass figurine of a dolphin. I also found this graph online that shows me the frequency response of when active noise canceling on AirPods Pro is activated and when it's off. So I'm gonna do some various noisy things and use that information from the graph to try and best simulate what it actually sounds like through the AirPods Pro when active noise cancellation is activated. For the best listening experience though, I think it's high time you put- Headphones on! Test number one, this floor standing fan. Test number two, filling a bathtub. Test number three, a Roomba. Test number four, a blender. Test number five, an electric sander. Test number six, car in a garage. Test number seven, a miter saw. Just kidding, saws are so loud. Use protection, don't be stupid. Test number eight, an electric lawnmower. Test number nine, a riding lawnmower. So how good is the noise canceling? It's pretty darn good. I know the original idea behind noise canceling was basically just to get rid of airplane noise, but I was still curious to know how they would handle my kind of tests as well. That and I still prefer over the ear headphones myself, since I don't exactly like sticking things in my ears. So, are AirPods Pro the best at noise canceling? No. Are they the best sounding when listening to music? No. Are they the most comfortable and have the longest battery life? No. 
But with its seamless integration into iOS itself using the H1 wireless chip, you cannot deny how cool it is to get a dependable wireless connection. It immediately notices when the case is open. It immediately notices when they get plugged into my ears. After a few weeks of testing them out, I have not yet had any connection issues, which I can't really say that with some other Bluetooth devices. They just work. And there's something very valuable in that because in this day and age, with things moving at such a fast pace all the time, we all know what a pain it is to have to troubleshoot devices that are not working properly. Did you restart your computer, sir? How do you do that? So Apple once again made a product that isn't the very, very best in all categories, but makes up for it by being dependable. Every single time you stick them in your ears. So there you have it, folks. Let me know about your experiences with AirPods or in-ear headphones in general in the comments below. Check out my Patreon for exclusive content. And if you enjoy having conversations about movies, audio, and music, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And of course, always be listening.